Hi, my name's Larry King, and I'm going to demonstrate today how to fillet, trim, and debone steelhead. The first thing I want to go over is that when you catch a steelhead, if you put it on a stringer, get the kind of stringer that goes up underneath its chin, it's metal and it clamps together, and put it in the water and keep it alive. And if you don't have a stringer and you bring it up and are gonna put it in a cooler, then you're gonna to have to cut the gills on both sides and let it bleed out. The one that's on the stringer, I pull up and I cut it right before, or 15 minutes before I'm gonna leave, put it back in the water and its heart's pumping and it helps it bleed out. Bleeding them is very important for the quality of the meat. So the next thing I wanna go over is my equipment. These are uh, a, a six inch and a nine inch Rapala knife. They're very inexpensive. They have really good steel and once you get an edge on them, they're very easy to maintain. This knife here is the nine inch and I've had this knife for 30, over 30 years. The way I sharpen them is with the diamond rods, that's diamond three, three uh, grit, or here's another diamond. And then I finish them with this rod, which is porcelain. These are the forceps that you're gonna need to take the bones out. I'm gonna show you how to take the bones out on one fillet, and then on the other, I'll show you how to debone it just with your knife. Okay, first grab the fish and turn it on its back. Take the long knife, go right behind the fins and cut. Don't be afraid of cutting too deep because you're gonna trim it anyway. And then just go heel to toe on the knife. Take it all the way back and cut off that back fin. That's the hardest part to get off is that back fin. But now, as you can see, that meat is really pink or orange. So you know it's a quality fish. If the meat's white, not so quality. This fish here comes right out of the lake and almost all of these are really fresh and the meat's really good. So now you fillet it like you would a normal fish. You can probably hear that knife on the bones. Take it and fillet the fillet all the way off. Turn it over like that. And anybody that has filleted a bunch of fish knows they don't all fillet the same. One side seems to always fillet better than the other side. You can do this part with an electric knife if you want. I wanted to show you with this knife so no, you could do it with this kind of knife too. Don't be afraid to cut these bones out because like I said, you're gonna trim it anyway. Trim all the fat off. Sometimes you'll be leaving bones up here. Trim all that off. Okay, so this is very important now. Cut a notch in the back, is it, so you have a place to hold your fingers. Make sure you keep the fish parallel to the table, because you're gonna have to move the knife up and down. Don't try to dig too deep. And go heel to toe, don't, don't saw it, but go heel to toe. I didn't actually do a very good job on that one. So you see all this dark meat? That's what we'll carve off because that's where the bad meat is. All right. Cut all those bones right out. Don't even try to save any. Okay. Now this is very important. Those pin bones run at the top of the fish. You can follow it back like this, and when you can't feel them anymore, chop, chop that part out. 
Now, when you chop that part out, make sure that you leave a notch so you know where the back of the fish is. When you debone it, you always start from the back and go forward. So that's ready. This is ready to cut out. Now we'll do this one. Takes a few cuts to get through there. Got that out of there. Okay, now I'm gonna cut these bones out. So I'm forcing the blade of my knife up so I don't go too deep. Again, you take these bones, you, you can't see them. I don't think you can, but I'm taking my finger. These pin bones run from the middle of the fish towards the top. That's very important to know, and you'll see why in a minute. So chop that back off. Ooh, I forgot to skin this guy. There's the notch. You can skin it like this now too, if you want. So that's two different ways to skin it. There's two different ways, whatever way you prefer. Okay, this one I'm going to debone this one. No, I'll debone the other one. So on this one, you feel the bones up there. That's where I chopped it off. Remember to take and cut a notch in the back of the fish so you know which side's which. That's very important because if you pull the bones out from the wrong side, it won't work very well. So there's a row of bones right here. You're gonna start with your knife on an angle. This is why I use this small knife. You can feel the bones with this knife if you're not cutting deep enough. Okay, so that's the top. There's no uh, there's no bones in there and there's no trimming you have to do. Now, I trimmed the top. Now you got to come back and trim the inside. Again, I can see the bones here. I don't know if you can there. And the reason I don't do this very often, unless I'm going to smoke them, because it leaves the fillet too thin. So there's, there's the bones. So that one's good to go. Now you take it and cut it in half. Now this is really important. You take and you cut the top or the bottom, but you cut it on an angle like that so that you can get at the dark meat to flay off. And this you do do in a saw. You saw this off there. That's the dark meat. This piece is ready to go. It has no bones. You don't have to worry about that in there. But it has no bones. This one here, uh, they always play out differently. This one here, I'll take that center piece out. I don't always, but sometimes I do. There. Now this here was from that one. I trim it back. I wanna trim this dark meat off. So I'll come on this side and I'll cut an angle like that. That's just to give a 
purchase for my knife because if it's real feathered out you won't be able to get get to it so you just start sawing like this you're getting all that dark meat off and then come down a little into that come up and then come on the other side and this takes a while to get the hang of it so now you got a piece it's got no bones in it This one has no bones because this was the back part. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut a slot out of it so I have a flat spot to get my knife into. Again, that's why these knives have to be really, really sharp. Because if not, you'll lose control and take off too much or too little. That's the reason they don't taste good. You can come back here if you miss some, don't worry about it. You can trim that off. Pull that off. There you got a perfectly beautiful piece of meat with nothing in it. Now this one here has got the bones in it. And we're gonna debone that. Just that piece there. I use two different kinds here. This is a little tricky. It's a little frustrating, but you'll get the hang of it. So I'm feeling where these bones are. The last bone I feel is right there. I don't know if you can see it. So this is the top of the fish. I don't know if you saw that. Feel for the next one. Don't get too frustrated with this. It takes a while to get the hang of that. This is my pre preferred way to do it. This adds about 15 minutes to the cleaning the fish. Again, I'm just feeling where, they're bo where the bones are at. You wanna poke the forceps in there kinda deep support the fish. Sometimes it takes two tries to get the bone. Sometimes I'll take a rag and clean it every time because if you get too much meat under here, it won't uh, let them close. I don't know if you guys could see it, but I'm taking my finger and I'm finding the bone. Then I'm pulling back and up. But remember, always start from the back of the fish. If you start from the front of the fish, it, uh, it really will not work very well. Now I know a lot of people are thinking, wow, that is sure a pain in the butt, but let me tell you, pays off in the end because you got a beautiful piece of meat and you have no bones in it and you can cook it any way you want but my preference is uh blackened the worst bones to get out are the ones that are at the very front so now you have a beautiful fillet with no bones in it i'll come back and cut this out a little bit more sometimes I'll leave that in and wait because sometimes when you take the bones out it gets pretty thin so blackened is my favorite way to do this but you could also double flour dip it in flour dip it in egg and then dip it in breading and fry it in a frying pan 
The biggest thing you have to be careful of is steelhead will cook a lot faster than normal fish, like walleye. So maybe for a while you might want to get a, a thermometer, a, a meat probe, and you should cook the fish to well, it's 140 to 145. Well, thank you all for listening and hope you have uh, luck doing it and cooking them. Thank you.